Georgia Academy for Assume Space Sciences and Technology uh, for another general lecture. So uh, this time, space robotics and robotet al is good to say it in Arabic. It should be presented by uh, uh, Ms. Maryam Isa Sharif. She is part of the Meteorite Center. I believe she loves to talk about, uh, about robotics or mechatronics and so on. So we welcome her for this meeting and we welcome our guests, our students, our faculty members for this beautiful uh, lecture. And uh, for the students, as you know, in about ha half an hour time, uh, so a link is going to pop up for you to report your uh, student uh, uh, email or student ID to get a certificate and for sure, hopefully later on to get some bonus points. So uh, Maryam, so please you have the stage. Thank you very much, Professor Elias, for this introduction. And uh, for today's lecture uh, is like one of uh, my favorite or that topics that interest me about space robotics and like sp uh, robotic spacecraft. Um, so um, the topic is really vast and includes a lot of uh, subtopics. Uh, but for today, we'll have just an introductory uh, lecture about space robotics. Uh, let me start uh, the talk. Okay, so we're starting with a question and I would like you all uh, to try to answer it. Uh, you can use the uh, chat box to uh, answer this question. So can you name um, a planet that is populated and, habit and inhabited um, by robots? So I would like to see your answers. You can think of any of planets like that. Still waiting for an answer. I believe select people are uh, joining the lecture. Maybe they didn't hear uh, the question. So the question is, can you name a planet that is populated and inhabited by robots? So please write it uh, to the, in the chat, not direct to SAS chat, please. Still waiting for an answer. All right, so um, the answer is Mars. Now Mars is like the most of the planet that is uh, inhabited by a lot of rovers and a lot, a lot of orbiters that orbit around the planet. So in order to uh, define uh, what is the term robot or what is robot in order to understand better the topic. So a robot is a machine pro pro programmable uh, by computer and capable of carrying out complex series of actions, like either automatically or uh, by a controller uh, device. Okay, so we would like to see what are uh, robotic applications. So we can find robotics almost everywhere and they uh, help and aid uh, people and human in various uh, of sectors, for example, we have in different um, factories and industries, service and entertainment sector, nuclear power plants, uh, as it's like can be classified as one of the most uh, dangerous uh, uh, workplace. Also in disaster and war, war sites, bottom of seas, oceans, and also 
in the outer space. So where is the topic today? It's about uh, robotics in space. So, and as uh, us humans, I'm sorry for that. So uh, we're back again. So as we are human beings, are curious by nature. So we would we like to discover things, not even not only in Earth but also in the outer space. So about space exploration, uh, why we do explore and uh, study the outer space? So in order to understand the origin of the universe or planet and also to know if we are alone in the universe or there are some other creatures there and uh, to have a habitable backup in case something happens to the earth so why space robotics why we don't just like humans go and uh, explore the space so there are three main um, uh, reasons why we use space robotics and space exploration is that space is a hostile environment. Uh, as you know, the microgravity, the space radiation and extreme temperatures um, that is difficult for humans to operate there. And uh, uh, it has to have like a lot of uh, setups uh, in order to protect humans in space. Uh, in, in this uh, hostile environment. And also robotics can uh, execute difficult tasks, uh, for example, constructions um, in orbit servicing, infeasible, uh, and also in infeasible locations. So like we have these robots, they can orbit around the planets, They're human, it's so hard to do that I mean, without the spacecraft. But uh, in order to stay like, for example, a long time uh, in the outer space, which is, really challenging and that uh, can be doable at this current time. And there is another reason why we use robotics in space exploration is because of the cost effective factor. So developing uh, or deploying ro robots are ris risky and cheaper than human launching into uh, an unknown environment. So we send robots first to do the exploration and then humans can come if everything is known and feasible. There is a uh, say by NASA that they say that they can, uh, the robotics can survive in this space for many years and can be left out there. So no need for a return trip. So that's another reason why we use robotics because if we send humans, then we have to return them back and not just leave them out of the outer space. Okay, so what can robotics do uh, in space? Uh, robotics can do a lot of things in, in the outer space, such as exploring and doing the survey, assembly, construction, uh, servicing and maintenance, as well as there's an interesting thing about robotic uh, landings. As you can see here on the right, we have like the SpaceX uh, uh, rocket that once uh, it was launched, uh, to space can return to uh, a, a specific location and can be reused and all of that using a robotics uh, system. So if you would like to classify robotics, there are two main classifications that can fall under. We have orbital robots as well as planetary robots. Orbital robots such as the International Space Station and also uh, robotic arms. And there is a, a robotic arm in the International Space Station called Dexter that does a lot of uh, uh, and helping the, the astronauts uh, in the International Space Station to do the maintenance and also the other work. So planetary robots can even be classified into further uh, classification. We have the orbiter, we have landers, rovers, as well as we can say helicopters, such as the ingenuity. Okay, so where we can find these robots? 
for example, in the solar system. Uh, so we have, uh, in this uh, image, we have a solar system explorers by the European Space Agency. Um, so what we have, like the robots, we can uh, find them almost everywhere in the solar system. So they can orbit around the sun to do uh, uh, sun uh, measurements and exploration missions. We have others in Venus, around the Earth itself, such as the satellites. They are considered as robots, the International Space Station, also over the moon. And we have on Mars, as well as uh, a lot on, on different asteroids and comets as well as, for example, Jupiter and its lunar um, and, the, and its moon. And also we have in Saturn as well. So in this uh, image is just like for uh, the European Space Agency mission that as we can see in the bottom, they call it legacy as like what we had uh, in earlier uh, uh, stages. And also, uh, if we go uh, to the second level, we have the active, uh, uh, the solar space uh, explorers. And if we go to the top, we have the um, the robotics that are under um, in development. So this is really interesting to check out what we have in the outer space in terms of robotics. This is another uh, interesting um, uh, a graph, or we can call it an infographic. So uh, it mentions the lunar mission, apart from Apollo different missions and other robotic uh, mission to the moon uh, back then. Uh, here we have uh, some of the commercial and institutional uh, uh, lunar missions, and we can see it as it's separated into two uh, halves. Uh, on the right, we have the commercial, and on the left, we have the institutional um, uh, lunar mission. So we have uh, it's flagged by the different uh, countries, and uh, also we can see uh, the different signs. For example, if this mission has a return or not, and if it's an orbiter or it's a lander or a lander and mobility and uh, if it's a human uh, mission. So all of that, all of this can come like for the current time, what we have, and then coming uh, into the future. So now let's talk about robots in Mars, in, in particular. So we'll start with the Mars rovers. And in this slide, I will explain uh, the rovers that are uh, developed by NASA. So we have the first one, the Soldier uh, rover, um, which is uh, a Mars uh, pathfinder that was uh, landed back in 1997, uh, being the first wheeled uh, robot to rover over uh, the red planet. Now here we have the twin, uh, Spirit and Opportunity. Um, they are Mars Exploration Rover uh, miss mission um, that was landed uh, on Mars on January uh, 20, 2004 to find evidence of water on Mars. Here we have Curiosity, uh, which is a Mars Science Laboratory mission, uh, also sent by NASA, uh, that was landed uh, on Mars on August uh, 2012 to find out if Mars once had, uh, like what all the life uh, needs, like, needs like water and right chemical uh, ingredients. What we have now, the Perseverance uh, uh, Mars rover, it's the Mars 2020 mission um, that was landed on Mars in February, 2021. Uh, so to look on uh, for sites of past or present life, uh, and see if human could uh, one day explore Mars and be there on Mars. So now here we have uh, a special uh, image. The, this image uh, that shows all of the rovers which have driven on Mars by NASA, as well as Mars helicopter, the ingenuity. Um, now this artwork was uh, 
was etched on a metal plate and it is a uh, place of uh, back of the uh, Mars uh, preserving its role. So what we have in the next slide is like a funny comment we can put on uh, that once uh, Perseverance landed and reached to uh, Mars, like for example, the aliens were there were asking it for to do a COVID test. So just um, turn to off. Now that was about the rovers. And here we have other uh, missions uh, that sent to Mars. This is also another interesting uh, infographic. We have like, we can see it by, um, if it was a solid line, this is a successful mission. And if it's uh, like dotted or dashed line, unsuccessful mission. So over the years, and as we can see, and the different countries that were involving in these missions, we have, for example, flyby, uh, orbiter lander, or rover. The flyby can, if you're wondering what's the flyby, what's the difference between and the other type of uh, spacecraft? So a flyby uh, is a spacecraft that pass close to the uh, planet's uh, orbit, but it's not captured by its orbital uh, gravity. So it can just fly over, not orbiting around the planet. So what we have here, we can see uh, the Hulk mission in this uh, infographic uh, as under the 2020 and beyond missions. As um, we have uh, seen the success of this mission to, uh, to reach an orbit around Mars and in order to return uh, data um, to us. So it's one of the missions uh, that we're heading to Mars over the different countries. So if you would like to see more about it, um, so the main objective is uh, to first complete uh, the first complete picture of Martian atmosphere, explain how the weather changes escape in hydrogen and oxygen to correlation the low atmosphere conditions with the upper atmosphere, understand the structure and variability of hydrogen and oxygen in the upper atmosphere, as well as identify why Mars is losing them into space. Understand the climate dynamics and the global weather uh, map through characterizing the lower atmosphere of Mars. These are the objectives. We can see here a short video of Mars trip. So it was launched on June, 2020. Um, so the video is in Arabic, so I'll just try to uh, say it in English. It was launched from Japan. Uh, on over uh, Mr. Beach uh, rocket. And it took like around seven months to reach Mars. And so we can see uh, the path that it take it was moving around uh, a high speed, um, as well as it was using a star tracker to know its direction and to know where it's heading. And once it reached to the Mars orbit, it slowed down in order to, to be catched in orbit uh, around its orbit. So to not be a flyby type, so because it's an orbiter. And there's the communication between the ground station and the, the probe itself to study the different uh, and, uh, atmospheric changes and climates. Um, over Mars, so as what we just said before. Okay, so we have seen the rovers, an example of uh, an orbit, uh, an orbiter uh, spacecraft. Now here we have another uh, example of a lander. So the Mars Insight mission, as we can see here in these image images. Um, so this spacecraft has been studying Mars since 2018 um, to learn uh, how other worlds, like including the Earth-like exoplanets uh, around other stars, evolve. Uh, so the Insight is now extending mission uh, to listen for Mars quakes uh, that will help us to learn more about what lies beneath under the surface. So 
this mission is involved with the what goes under uh, the planet. So what we can see in the first uh, image on the left, uh, that the spacecraft is deploying its solar panels in order to work. This is one of the most important uh, criteria. Uh, so it's like the uh, electrical power to involve the electrical power. And there is a specific uh, measurement that we have in the InSight mission. Um, it's called the seismometer uh, to measure the, the Mars quake and the heat uh, flow probe that's called HP3 uh, under the Mars, uh, the Mars Earth. Okay, so as humans, we don't just stop at a specific point. So we don't just stop about our solar system. We want to go beyond our solar system. And this is uh, an example of uh, one of the missions. As we can see, this is an illustration oriented along the ecliptic plane. Uh, as NASA have a, a space telescopes look uh, along the paths of NASA, for your one and two spacecraft as they journey throughout the solar system into the interstellar space. So Hubble is gazing uh, at two sides lines as we can see in this graph in a cone uh, shape. Uh, so the telescope goal is to help astronomers map the interstellar structure along each spacecraft um, start bound drop. Now, uh, each side line stretches several light years, as you can see on the bottom uh, of the graph, um, to, to the nearby star, of course. And this image was retrieved from NASA's website. So we have just mentioned some of the examples of space missions uh, over Mars. Now, we talk about, about challenges uh, in space robotics research. So what are the challenges faced uh, for space robotics? Is still that we have to protect it from the harsh space environment. And also the mobility in different terrains, as we can see in this image. So for example, the, lo the lunar uh, service is not smooth. So also the Martian service. So we have to... Uh, uh, go over these challenges by creating uh, uh, and innovate different ways uh, to do it. Also, we have some power limitations that have to be taken under concentration. The low mass, requ uh, the low mass requirements, of course, by launching the different spacecrafts. Uh, the real reliability that we have to make sure that it is reliable because once we send it to the outer space, it's uh, so hard to return it back and do some modifications on. Huh? So that's another point. Um, remote operations have to be done very well. Autonomous capabilities have to be also uh, doing very well as well. We have to do a lot of testing in order to overcome these challenges. So here we have uh, some uh, core robotic technology. Uh, as we can see here. So the mobility and locomotion, uh, autonomy and intelligence, the sample acquisition and analysis and delivery. So we'll go one by one uh, quickly. So we have now here the mobility locomotion such as like the weird length, the tumbling, which is also called as bouncing, the flying and floating. We have on the right um, image uh, about an example of uh, a wheeled uh, robot. And about uh, autonomy and intelligence here, where uh, the artificial intelligence can come uh, into this part. So a typical robotic system architecture can be in like three to sense, think and act. Sense like to, to gain some, uh, to do the data acquisition, uh, filtering and perception. To, to know what is around it. And then it has to think about it, what it has um, gathered. 
need to do, for example, navigation, uh, localization, and decision making to in order what to do. And then that goes into an act uh, on the local motion and kinematics, and as well motor control. So it has to take an action in this page. Now, the third part of uh, robotic technology, we have, for example, the sample acquisition, analysis, and delivery. Here we have uh, an example of a sample collection, uh, as we can see here by Hayabusa. Um, it's um, uh, a robotic that landed on in an asteroid. So we have, for example, here, as can be seen from the image, the collection capsule and the sampling uh, horn. And you can see on the right, a, a diagram that illustrates how the process goes. So we can see that we have um, the sample collection process uh, during the mission. So a projectile is uh, fired at the asteroid, as you can see from A and B. And once uh, this projectile is fired, then we have some uh, debris or samples that fly, and then we can uh, collect of these debris to have it and to do the analysis and studies on it. There is another example, uh, the robotic arm, as we can see here from the inside lander. Um, the, the robotic arm is just like scooping uh, some sample in order to do uh, some the analysis. Now, in terms of testing space robots, there are that we can do it in, into uh, parts. There's an indoor testing and outdoor testing. The indoor testing, such as the, sa uh, the sandbox experiments, where they have like uh, boxes of sand and they can uh, elevate these sandbox into different elevations uh, in order to do the experimenting and testing. Also, we have, for example, Mars Yard that simulates the, the Mars uh, environment, uh, I mean the land, and to try to test the robots or rovers over it. While going to the outdoor testing, we have, for example, to test it in a different harsh environment, for example, in Antarctica, this is uh, uh, one of the Jupiter missions that is planned to go to Jupiter and to dive in, into it, the planets to go underneath and to explore. So, for example, we have uh, here an outdoor testing. There's another uh, type of testing, for example, I mean, in, in another environment in a desert um, area. This is in Utah in the United States. And what we have here in the UAE that we are they are planning to uh, launch uh, um, a lunar rover that's called Rashid rover, and they are just like past weeks they are trying to test it on the out uh, outdoor testing uh, deep uh, into the deserts of Dubai. Now here we have some trends uh, in space robotics. If you are really interested, this is the trend that you can look further and explore more. Uh, there's something called the swarm or multi-agent explorations where it's like a multiple uh, of robotics that they do uh, like one um, mission or task. Also, we have something called modular robotics, uh, bio-inspired robots, shape-changing origami. That's what we do into, to create different changes as we can see here in the bottom, that it changes uh, its shape um, once it's launched until it uh, lands, for example. Um, the human robotic interaction, machine learning and artificial intelligence, and I believe my colleagues have done a lot of lectures about it, uh, so you can watch it out it's, uh, in our SAS YouTube channel. Um, and an insert uh, manufacturing and services. So I just wanted to share one of uh, nice experiences that I had back in 2017, 2017 um, building a lunar uh, rover workshop that was in Mother Institute at the Assad Space Lab while I was doing my internship back there. 
Uh, so uh, we had like a workshop to develop and assemble basically uh, a lunar rover, a lunar rover. And as you can see here in the left, we have the image of this robot rover. Uh, once we have assembled it and we have here short videos showing it um, moving around and trying to go over this uh, rock that we have here because of the unique structure that it had. So it was able to go over it. And in the picture on the right, that was where we were um, uh, assembling the robots with the team uh, that we had back then. So by that, I reached to the end of this presentation and I hope that you um, enjoyed it and learned uh, from it. So this is the end of the lecture. And if you have a question, I'll be pleased to answer. Thank you very much, uh, Mariam, for this nice lecture. So I will open the floor for uh, questions. So if you have any questions, so you, you can chat it or you can just say it right away, please. So as Maria was showing, so everything now is doing through robotics. So especially if you go beyond uh, beyond uh, the moon, so everything, uh, if you go to Mars, so we, we have several uh, rovers there uh, working and uh, this should be also the future. So we may send the rovers uh, to, to try to build our Martian base before we go there as human beings. Any questions, please? Uh, you, one, just one uh, comment. You show, you show uh, um, uh, like uh, some kind of uh, a graph showing all the different space mission to, especially the Martian missions. Uh, there's one for Exo, Exo Mars, that European one, but uh, it was supposed to be launched in 2020, but they had a problem with the parachute, so they delayed to 2022. And because it is uh, an European plus Russian uh, mission, so and because of what is happening now uh, in Ukraine and so on, so that mission has been zapped, and maybe we have to wait another two years for it. Any comment, please, from my students? No, thank you, doctor. Everything was clear, hopefully. Yes, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, so if there are no questions, so we thank again, Maria Meza Sharif for this nice presentation about space robotics. And uh, we'll give you uh, a rendezvous for another lecture. So it will be in Ramadan for sure. And uh, hopefully you won't be, you won't be, uh, you, won't, you will not be sleeping during that time. To see, be, still be at the same time, one to two o'clock, inshallah. So we let you know on time. Thank you again. So have a good day. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa Thank you, doctor. Thank you, thank you, doctor Marim. Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure.